Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're tuning in. My name is Cena Alenik, and you are listening to the Stones Bones Podcast. Let me get my phone out of my pocket. <laughs> you guys, I have a really special episode for you guys for you guys tonight. I am talking about agate. And Crystal sent me home with um, a lot of Brazilian agate, and that is basically going to be the central theme of the podcast for just a bit. And then I'm going to cover agate overall, some of its um, healing properties, and how it was used in history, some of the superstitions on it. And this will be the introduction to agate overall. So we are going to be talking about agate um, possibly in the future, uh, most likely, because we'll be doing podcasts. But um, most likely in the future, in the near future, we'll be talking more about agate. And some of its healing properties, some of um, the lore surrounding it, and just a really, really interesting stone and a really, really um, interesting piece of agate um, is Brazilian agate. And agate overall is extremely interesting because some of the things I was reading about it online are really interesting and how it was used in history, some of the lore behind it, some of the superstitions behind it, and things of that nature are just really, really fascinating. Uh, that being said, if you guys are listening to me on Apple Podcasts, uh, Breaker, CastBox, Anchor, uh, I said Anchor, uh, Radio Public, wherever you guys are listening to me on, make sure you guys search us on Facebook at Stones Bones Billings, on YouTube at Stones Bones Billings, and search for us on Instagram as well at Stones Bones Billings. And visit us on our website at stones-bones.com. And you guys will be able to find a wide variety of stones, gems, fossils, um, whatever you guys are searching for. If you guys are searching for a gift, this is the place to get it. And especially if you guys are into the metaphysical, if you guys are searching for um, items that are extremely and truly unique, make sure you visit stones-bones.com. It is the perfect place for the gift. Uh, perfect place to add to your collection. Perfect place to start your collection if you guys are getting into um, collecting stones and things of that nature. So, we are talking about agate, and this is the introduction, just like I mentioned. And I have some Brazilian agate on the table, and there's a blue piece off to the side, and I can't <laughs> include this one because it, they always seem to disappear. Um, this is a blue piece of agate, and it'll po possibly disappear um, with my green screen behind me. So that being said, um, I am talking about Brazilian agate to start with, and this is a translucent or transparent um, piece of agate and exhibit patterns of ovoids or circles in many colors, and many are dyed, and that is the thing about Brazilian agate is this is widely popular to be dyed, and they are found in wi a wide range of colors, but uh, they're actually very, very popular to be dyed, and I actually have a purple piece on the table as well. I, I have a pink piece on the table. Um, I have a slightly, I believe this is slightly, but this is a really cool piece. And everything you guys see on the table is for sale, so if you guys are in the market for Brazilian agate, you guys are in the market for agate overall, make sure you guys visit stones-bones.com or comment on this video and make sure you guys claim these pieces. I am going Facebook Live very, very soon with these, and I'm going live on Instagram, so if you guys want these pieces, make sure you grab them now, and make sure you guys look out for those um, live streams. Um... And so let's go forward to the podcast. Uh, translucent, like I mentioned, and many are dyed, and, and many are also natural in color. Found in Rio do Sol, Brazil. And the cool thing about the Brazilian agate, and this is a strange thing also, is that these are actually used in ceremonial, um, ceremonial meetings in the Amazon. And the tribal leaders would actually bring these, and they would actually set this in the middle of their meeting, and they would have... Um, these um, members dance around the Brazilian agate. This is actually a tribal um, meeting um, stone that they used um, inside the Amazon, the tribes inside the Amazon. A really cool piece of history with the Brazilian agate. Uh, Brazilian agates are usually found in large geodes of layered nodules, usually brown with layers of gray and white on the inside. And I actually have a piece of that on the table. I actually have a piece of Brazilian agate that is in its natural state. And and it is not dyed. And it has also, like it, like I just mentioned, it has the white and the gray on the inside as well as um, some slight hints of brown. Also, a really cool piece. If you guys can see it, I'm not sure if you can. But I will do a video of it. And... Now let's get into agate overall. And agate itself is a truly fascinating, truly, truly fascinating 
uh, stone because there's lore. There's uh, different stories that how this was used around the world. There is uh, superstitions of agate. There are um, how this was used in history and how it was rooted inside of the Greek culture, the Roman culture. And one of the things that was said about agate, it is it is said to balance the body and the emotions. And that is the some of the healing properties that are on it. And there are plenty of other healing properties. I mean, this is one of the ones that is sought after, especially on the metaphysical pro, uh, market. And just a really, really cool stone overall. In historic times, agate was placed in water for cooking or drinking to combat sickness. And if you guys are also following this practice at home, if you guys are planning on making elixirs out of this, if you guys are planning on placing this inside of water and drinking it, ingesting it, whatever you guys are going to do, uh, because I know that plenty of you guys out there actually do this and practice this, is make sure, please make sure that you guys are using a non-dyed piece of agate inside of your um, elixirs. That being said, this is um, also a substitute for the birthstone of the sapphire in September, and this is attributed to the Gemini, uh, the agate, and that is any agate that you can think of. So if you guys are born in September or if you are a Gemini, you can select a uh, Brazilian agate, you can uh, select I agate, you can select Montana agate, you guys can select whatever piece of agate you want as your birthstone. And... If you guys are celebrating a 12th or 14th year anniversary in your marriage, this is said to be the stone to get your loved one or your significant other or something to place inside of your home um, to signify those years. And I'm not sure why that is, and I'm not sure why that is a superstition or and why that is um, attributed to the 12th or 14th year of marriage, but this is the gift to get, I guess, uh, for your significant other, for your wife or your husband. Um, a really cool... Um, fact the hardest level on this is actually a seven so this is actually suitable for jewelry and things of that nature this is actually used widely in the jewelry world jewelry jewelry world i have some i have a hard time with some of my r's found in a variety of colors but green and blue are rare so if you guys are at home and you guys have a piece of blue or have a piece of green agate make sure you guys comment on the video and tag uh, myself or tag the page and I want to see you guys pieces. I am not going to Google it. I am learning along with you guys. So if you guys have a blue piece, if you guys have a green piece of agate, make sure you guys comment that on the video and I will go take a look at it. Now, agate is a form of chalcedony. Chalcedony. I'm hoping I'm saying it right. And formed from layers of quartz. And that is basically the base layer of what agate is. Uh, sometimes small quartz crystals uh, form within the agate, which are called druzies, and actually have some of that on the table. Uh, jewelers use druzies, uh, cabochons, as a main stone or an accent stone of uh, their, their jewelry pieces. And they actually use these after a laboratory cuts these and shapes these to them. And it is sought after, highly sought after. A really cool, um, really cool thing to have on a piece of jewelry. Now, the thing about agate is it is relatively inexpensive. Um, although Montana agate, which I also have on the table, has, has been widely popular around the world, has been widely popular um, in the jewelry trades, and it has gained popularity in jewelry, some well-cut Montana agate with well-defined patterns exceed the price of some well-known gemstones. And that is a really cool piece. So... I did not know that. Actually, I had no idea that that was actually a thing. And the cool thing is Crystal has a lot of Montana agate inside of the shop. So if you guys are in the area, go to 701 24th Street West, Billings, Montana. It's connected to the Body Works, Piercing, uh, Body Works Tattoo and Piercing Building. And make sure you guys visit the Stones and Bones Rock Shop and look for Montana agate because this is... Um, a really really cool piece of they're really cool pieces of agate and I enjoy those and those are actually now agate can be uh, sometimes be semi-precious gemstone when it is of quality and when it is of color and and that just goes to show that Montana agate when it is of quality and color can surpass some well-known gemstones really really cool 
Um, <clears throat> now, forgive me if I say this name right, uh, name wrong. Um, Agate was first reported by Pliny in 17, 77 AD. Pliny uh, the Elder, you can actually Google him on um, the web, search Pliny the Elder, and he was a Roman author, a naturalist, a naturalist philosopher, army commander of the Roman Empire. And that is the thing about a lot of these... Um, a lot of these authors is that they're actually they were commanders in the Roman Empire. They wrote a lot. They're mineralogists and things of that nature. And it's just a really really cool piece to add to a lot of these stones. Is that these stones were first noted by these philosophers, and the agate was first noted by uh, Pliny in 77 AD. He wrote the Encyclopedic Naturalist Historia, which became a model for encyclopedias today. And Pliny believed agate would make the make its words agreeable, persuasive, and give them God's favor. And that is one of the things I will leave you guys with, with agate. Now, here's another one. And this is just some of the lore that surrounds agate, and especially in the 1800s. And, and this is a really cool fact for me to find. In the 1800s, rock cutters in Germany had no time to cut anything else but amulets out of eye agate. Uh, eye agate is a brown or black agate uh, with a white ring in the center of it. The eye was said to take on the watchfulness of one's guardian spirit and protect them from the evil eye. <laughs> That's cool. Um, now, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I tried to get through this um, as quickly as possible because I wanted to get this out as soon as possible. But I know that I am very, very late. Um, my brother actually had my my tripods that I used for my camera. And I was not able to get the podcast out quite as um, early as I wanted to. Um, that being said, make sure you guys follow us on these platforms that I am listing below. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you guys are on YouTube. And if you guys are on the podcasting platforms, visit us on our social media handles at Stones and Bones Billings. Just search us on the web. Search stones-bones.com and pick up a gift. You guys, it's a really, really cool place to shop and I hope you guys enjoy it. My name is Sid Alenik and you are listening to the Stones and Bones Podcast. <laughs>